Ah, I got no balls. Hey, you beautiful buccaneers, Falcor here. So we've had humongous sharks, we've had huge prehistoric sea fish with tentacles, and we've had skeletal vessels. All threats rising from the deep. But one thing we are yet to see, and have been promised for so long, is the evil merfolk. Now, for those who have been following me for a long time, I've always loved to talk about these beings, and most of the knowledge for this species stems from the lore outside of the game, such as the novel Athena's Fortune and the Tales from the Sea of Thieves, which is essentially Flameheart Jr.'s journal. And for this video's sake, I shall be referring to it as that from now on. And of course, the island within the game Discovery Ridge. That shows us that the merfolk have several forms of transformation. The friendly fish face we all love to hate, and a more malevolent form, which we are yet to see in the game. Now, when you're dealing with a lore from the game that is yet to come into fruition, it's very hard to recognize what has been axed and was merely the musing of the devs during development, and what is actually integral to the lore. As an example, there is a rhyme within Flameheart's journal that hints towards merfolk being some sort of curse, and can be transmitted via a bite. The victim then slowly turns into a merfolk themselves over time, and one of the wall paintings at Discovery Ridge backs up this claim. Before us pirates came here, the merfolk and the ancients lived in harmony. No biting was involved. Flameheart, stop ruining my shots, you absolute c- So it's hard to tell whether this rhyme was integral to the story, or whether it was merely a sea fable to scare children from the water. That said though, at Discovery's Ridge, the wall paintings do show what appears to be a human, or rather an ancient for that matter, being turned over time into a merfolk. But Discovery Ridge isn't the only place with interesting merfolk features. The aptly named Mermaid's Hideaway also comes with its fair share of mystery. Now, I'm surprised not a lot of people know about this, but in the central lake of the island, which can also be accessed by this man-made excavation, lies a coral reef with large merfolk statues within. Unlike the structures of the ancients, these statues have completely different architecture, which suggests they were constructed by the merfolk themselves. But why here? Well, thanks to the lore outside of the game, we know that the area around the west of Golden Sands is where most of the merfolk activity takes place, and where most of the sightings are. I mean, sure, we see them all the time because it's part of the game mechanics, but the NPCs within the game often have sightings of them roaming this area. We also know that the Ancients and the Merfolk would have meet and greet type areas, and would use a set of special earrings to communicate with them. Also, these earrings were discovered by a character named Bell within the Flameheart's journal, and are yet to surface within the game. Without them, we cannot communicate with our merfolk friends. Because if we could, I would tell them to spawn! But talking of statues, let's go back in time, to the days before anything that really mattered, and cast our minds back to the release of the Bilge Rat adventure, the Sunken Curse. This patch added mermaid statues now dotted around every aisle. However, back then, they were just part of a set of commendations. We didn't get any sparkly gem from them, we were given orders to go and destroy them, then we got the title, The Curse Breaker, which suggests that these merfolk were cursed to stone. What interests me is these merfolk statues don't look like your average merfolk, but rather like the more malevolent kind. Their souls or essence trapped within the stone, crying out to be set free for eternity. So that's cheerful. When was the last time we heard about souls being bound to objects? We know that Greymara used this power to bind souls to objects so they could not free themselves on the Ferry of the Damned and return to the Land of the Living, and this process was learnt from Pendragon. And Pendragon, in turn, learnt this from the Order of Souls. We also know that Flameheart himself knew of this binding magic, as he cursed himself this way to essentially travel through time. But where did this magic originate from? 
the Order of Souls gain most of their knowledge from the skulls of skeletons, some of them as old as the ancients themselves. And considering the merfolk were around at the time of the ancients, it's fair to assume that this binding magic predates us pirates. So who or what is responsible for cursing these merfolk? And more importantly, are they even merfolk? These statues could be prepared vessels constructed for pirates to bind them into a ceremonial statue as a way to ward off other pirates. A warning, in a sense. Stay out of the water, or this will happen to you. Maybe the evil merfolk have been sending us a message for the longest time, but we simply have not been listening. Maybe soon we will hear their words and be sent on a whole new adventure. That's it for today folks, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video then please hit that like button, and if you really liked the video please hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that bell so you're always notified when I upload. And if you're looking for ways to support me please head over to my Patreon page where I offer tiers that give you perks for your support, link is in the pinned comments below. Until next time, take care of yourself and happy sailing, bye bye.